Now joining us live from the Mesa is the athletic director for San Diego State University, Jim Sterk. Jim, we do appreciate your time. How's your week going so far? Great. Uh, thanks for having me on. It's uh, it, it's a little bit. I'm looking out my window here. It's a it's a wet drive with Josh and Sherrod today. So, uh, uh, but it's supposed to clear off and be a, turn out to be a great weekend for football. Mm-hmm. That's true. I even saw sunny on Saturday. And yeah. That's what really matters. Yeah, it'll be great. Yeah. So we're going to survive here in San Diego, even though <laughs> we get a little rain from time to time. Hey, Jim, describe what makes this game special. What are the festivities that go along with homecoming? Well, one, uh, we're bringing in a team that um, we haven't beat yet in TCU. And they, they uh, if you remember, they won the Rose Bowl last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, sh- probably should have been playing for the national title. Uh, had a great team. They have a lot of those players back, but, you know, have some changes. And I, I think you'll see two high-powered offenses, which is always fun. Uh, I think there'll be a lot of scoring, and we have that opportunity to do that. Hopefully we uh, we hold them uh, better than they hold us. But um, along with that, um, it, it's really appropriate uh, this year that, that uh, Marshall Falk is our grand marshal for the uh, for our homecoming festivities. Nice. And, and with him going into the Hall of Fame, uh, foot, National Football Hall of Fame, it was it was perfect. Um, at the game, uh, when we get to the game, there'll be 28,000 hats with embroidered. They look really, really sharp uh, with Marshall Falk's number on them and Aztecs and, and the Hall of Fame logo. So those will be handed out at the game. But prior to that, on campus, uh, actually uh, tomorrow, uh, there'll be a parade on campus, uh, and Marshall, uh, along with the students, kind of a rally, if you will, and uh, there's a lot of things going on with that. And then Marshall has a uh, homecoming celebration, Aztec for Life homecoming celebration at the Alumni Center on Friday night uh, from 7 to 11. I think he has eight different uh, restaurants uh, catering, and it's just a, a fun fun evening and and then uh and then we head to game day uh with our warrior walk at 5 30 and game starts at 7 30 and jim you know i remember going back from my high school days into college i always remember those those homecoming games those were the teams that you said to yourself okay we got this one we got to schedule this team for homecoming <laughs> because you always want to win for homecoming so is this san diego state saying this is the year throwing down the gauntlet as tcu gets set to lead the Big East? this is the year we take them down is that what we're saying right now well you know probably not as that that bold, but I, 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 did, I did tell my uh, I, I did tell my new boss, President Hirschman, that uh, you know be, as he arrived and he was talking about the football team in the season, and I said, and oh by the way, we're going to take TCU, and so uh, so I called it uh, a long time ago, and um, and obviously it's going to be uh, uh, we've got to play well. Uh, because they are a very good team, they just fell out of the top 25 right. and, yep. and had a heartbreaking loss last week. But uh, I imagine that they'll come in here, uh, you know, r- ready to to play better. And and we're we're excited about having them. Um, as you know, the last game we had, we we had over 9,000 students there, uh, set an attendance record with 57,000, and so we're hoping for a, a great day. And and really, Rocky said it really really helped turn the momentum of the game. And uh, so we need that to happen again on Saturday. Oh, yeah. Aztecs AD Jim Sterk is our guest. Jim, you just brought up the name Elliot Hirschman, and I know a lot of sports fans appreciated that uh, Stephen Weber valued sports on campus. Tell us a little bit about your new boss, Elliot Hirschman, and just his vision for sports at San Diego State. Well, he, uh, I think he has it in an appropriate uh, context and understands that he, he comes from the academic side and has been a provost at an institution and, um, and, and has a great background academically, but understands where athletics is and, and, and what what value we bring to the table and and what you know we can do as far as as bringing national attention to san diego state and and that has happened over the last couple of years and and we want to continue to build upon that uh, with our program and and because there are a lot of great things that we can help spotlight that are happening here at at san diego state and the and the great programs academically that they have here so um, we must be doing something right if 62,000 kids are trying to get in each year. And, oh, yeah. and uh, that incoming class is a 378 and a, and a 11, 1148 SAT. So uh, it's competitive, uh, but a great, uh, great environment. I've just loved my time on the Mesa so far. 
And Jim, I know you still have for this uh, for this university for this program BCS aspirations, automatic qualifier bid. But what's what am I hearing right now, or at least reading a little bit, where you you're potentially looking at a a postseason championship game against Conference USA? What do you have, or what do you stand to gain from a game like that? Yeah, good question. Um, you know, as we're we're uh, we're trying to achieve uh, BCS automatic qualifying status uh, with our league, the Mountain West Conference, and. And if that doesn't occur, uh, kind of a fallback, if you will, is is to look at at uh, taking the football uh, leagues uh, or the the programs out of the two leagues and and creating an LLC and creating an entity that has a championship game at the end. Maybe there's some um, some scheduling alliances uh, with non-conference, if you will, and uh, but the champions of the two playing for uh, at the end and then um, uh, achieving BCS status that way. Now you know the the BCS you know they've created the rules with it and and really if you look at it the Mountain West conference is, is a lot stronger than the Big East and and they've been crippled even more with uh, Pitt and Syracuse yeah. being being uh being taken by the ACC that won't happen for probably a year or so but but that's going on and our league is has performed very very well and um of the non qualifiers or non automatic qualifying conferences we have had or or currently have uh, all those schools that have that have done that and and run the gauntlet like TCU and like Utah and and Boise State coming in this year and being ranked in the top tw- not top 5 so uh, it's a great league it's competitive and um and it sets up for a good race this year and we're hoping to be in that mix yeah jim on another topic the idea of a conference network is money generate some revenue up to this point are you pleased with the mountain network well, the mountain is is the third tier as you look at at our at, at tiers, and you, you you heard I think the Big Twelve talk about their top two tiers that they're going to share evenly, and and our top two tiers are are really uh, versus which is turning into NBC Sports Network, and then CBS has the middle middle tier, uh, and there with CBS Sports Network used to be CBS College Sports, and then our third tier which in a lot of conferences, reverts back to your local uh, agreements. Um, so the mountain kind of serves that, and and we're looking at that and seeing whether or not you know you know what's best for us in the future. Uh, is it best to let the schools revert back to their own rights or or have the mountain? But it, it's it's distributed you know a lot further than people think. We just have a problem here because of North County and and Time Warner not picking it up. Um, but a, a lot of places you you can pick it up in Atlanta, you can pick it up in Chicago, you can pick it up around the country and on Direct TV nationally. Um, but we can't get it in North County, unfortunately. <laughs> so um, so the Mountain does uh, does well from from a you know a, a quasi national local agreement if you will so it's not bad that way Jim I was reading where the land use and housing committee uh put a potential pay raise out there you know the a proposal for a pay raise or a, a uh a cost hike I should say for parking for Qualcomm Stadium for all type of events talking about maybe the minimum park would be $20 so they're actually hiking that up a little bit do you, are you getting any word where that stands right now would that stand for San Diego State Aztec uh, football games as well you know I I haven't uh haven't uh Sherrod, so I I need to you know catch up on that I haven't heard about that and uh but I I I'm sure I will shortly and but you, I, we want to keep that as low as possible, make it affordable for yeah. people to come. And, and you know, we've done some things with center plate, you know, uh, on some deals that they have. And so it's it, it's affordable for families to go and, and come to our, our game uh, because we are different than the pros. The, you know, the collegiate uh, collegiate games are a little more family-oriented, and we want to make it, make it affordable for them. That's expensive for college kids, too. I mean, a $20 hit, that's... Yeah, that's, that's beer money. Expensive. Yeah, well, you, they can take our, the trolley from uh, from campus, so that's go. not a bad deal. Okay, not at all, Jim. Before you go, I'll ask you an open ended question. And I know there were a lot of emotions in Michigan, but how was your trip to Ann Arbor? Um, you, you know, it was it was interesting. I you know I really took the time on Friday to look around. We toured their their stadium renovation, their uh, basketball practice facility that which they're building and and their renovation of their arena and so uh, it was it was good from that standpoint i thought um a, it was a great collegiate atmosphere i think the fans uh treated us very well and i didn't hear any negatives that way um 
it, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't, uh, it wasn't as uh, intimidating as I thought it might be, um, you know, as far as the, the field. It, it, it's kind of a quiet stadium, if you will. It's not a, you know, a loud, uh, loud crowd and intimidating crowd, but I thought, um, I, I think our kids, you know, were, got a little bit too hyped up over it and and wanted to beat uh you know their their former coaches too bad and and maybe didn't play up to potential but i i think it was a unique experience um i think a good one i think i think our kids learn from it so i think they'll be prepared for the next time that happens yeah so you had a chance to say hello to brady i did uh a little bit before and and then uh and then afterwards and and saw some of the folks uh after the game too they, you. you know brady and rocky are pretty close you know they've They've known each other a long time, and I think they're going to be, you know, happy to be able to just talk frankly <laughs> over the phone as opposed to being coy about how things are going, you know, uh, prior to that game. So uh, I, I think, uh, uh, you know, he, as Rocky said, I, you know, I think Brady has an opportunity to win a national championship here, and and uh, and Rocky thinks he can he can go to a BCS bowl bowl here. So I think I think things worked out. Um, and I, I think we're we're very excited about where we are and, and how the program is headed. I fully agree. Now the plan is to get back on track. Homecoming Saturday night, 7.30 kickoff, Warrior Walk, around 5.30 at the Q against TCU. He is the athletic director, Jim Sterk. Jim, we do appreciate your time as always. Have a great time at the Q, and we'll see you out there. All right. Thank you, guys. You got it, Jim. Thanks a lot, man.